Hey guys, this is Austin, and today it is time to upgrade Matt's 2010 Mac Pro. Yeah, 2010. Okay, so Matt has had an unfortunate incident recently and that his dog broke his iMac screen. So, to hook him up, we're gonna do a little bit of a project and see what we can actually upgrade with his original Mac Pro. Also, if you guys don't know Matt, he's the one who runs This Is and uh, makes fun of me on Mystery Tech. It's true. This is not a stock 2010 Mac Pro, right? It still works right now, but you wanna basically see if you can get it a little bit Less yeah, garbage. like uh, I've done some modifications with it. These are all USB 2, and there's yeah. no way to really change that. So then uh, I needed USB 3, so I got um, this card here, which has worked really well for me, yeah. but it needed uh, dedicated power. It wouldn't run off the PCIe. Wait, so did you? Th this came with an optical drive, right? It, it, has, it has two optical bays. The door doesn't like to close. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, turns out it's 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 there's nothing meant to be right here. Um, so you've upgraded this several times over the years that you've owned the Mac Pro. Yes. So what are you doing with the Mac Pro once we're done rebuilding it? So I do video editing. When was the last time you cleaned this? Uh, there's literally like an inch of dust on your graphics card. Probably never. <laughs> Woo! This was an off-road. Uh, off-road? Yeah. Um, so when so you I actually, you travel with this. Yeah. Um, so can you run me through the spec of this guy? So this is 2010, is it what, a quad core? It is a quad core, I think 2.6 gigahertz Xenon. The first thing is, we should upgrade the CPU. If you're rocking the quad core, this goes up to, what is it, like 10 cores, It, it cores? can do 12 cores maximum. You've already got the hard drives. I think maybe we just swap out this SSD for something that's just a little bit more modern, a little bit quicker. So we've got a, a task here. So I think the next step is I need to do some Googling and find some parts. And let's see if we can get this upgraded and back to 2019 specs. So it has been about, what, two weeks now? Two weeks. And we have everything we need for the ultimate Mac Pro. Mac so, Pro. The Mac Pro, apologies. So the way that the Mac Pro works is that while you can buy the CPUs, you can also buy the entire tray, which essentially is the motherboard. Uh, we could have gone to a six core with a little bit better clock speed, but the real upgrade is going to the dual socket. Yes. So essentially what we have here are a pair of six core processors. That might not sound super impressive, thank you very much, in this sort of modern era where we have, you know, what, 32 cores in Threadripper, but 12 cores was a lot of power, especially for 2010. One of the interesting things about this is that the entire upgrade was actually not that expensive. So we were able to get the tray, which of course is the motherboard, as well as the two CPUs for a little bit over $500. Now this is like a, what, like a $6,500 config when it first came out? Yeah, uh, and that's not including the memory we got with it. Oh yeah, um, yeah. so we also have to get, uh, we got 64 gigs, as you can see by my giant pile of dents here. I mean, I guess you do have the limitation that single thread is probably not gonna be super impressive, but what we're using it for is primarily like editing. I do play the occasional game on it. Well, you'll definitely be able to game. Oh yeah, I love my civilization. Boom, so with that, we have upgraded from a quad core to a 12 core, and this entire setup with the new tray, the dual CPUs, the 64 gigs of RAM, still cost us only about $700, yeah. which obviously is a fair bit, but considering that if you would've bought this in 2010, it would've been at least 10 times that, really not a bad upgrade. Uh, so we went with a uh, RX 580 uh, AMD card, um, this is pretty much the maximum that the system can handle. This is the original connector. It's a pair of six pins. Correct. And you've adapted a six to an eight, which... Already is bad. All right, let's pull the 760 out. So this is actually built-in support for like a longer GPU. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. interesting. Um, actually, have we even measured to see if this Strix card will fit? Um, on paper. I mean... It, I, I eyeballed it. It looked like it'll be... It'll be fine. Oh, we didn't clean this out. Why is there already a 14 terabyte hard drive in here? I got excited. Well, okay then. So, apparently, Matt's stealing company property and installing a 14 terabyte hard drive in his Mac Pro. So when we started this project, um, it was running Sierra. And so we wanted to go to Mojave because we needed that for the... Um, the graphics card support, but it wouldn't let us upgrade it until we upgraded the firmware of the um, the motherboards. But there's a fun little problem with that, is the only way to update the firmware is if you have the original EFI graphics cards. So we found a guy in town who had one and let us borrow his just to update the firmware. You're covered in dust right now. Oh no, why did you clean your dirty computer? I thought that's what you were doing. No! I'm upgrading it with like 12 cores and stuff. I'm not cleaning. Do I look like a cleaning service? Full service, man. <laughs> so with that, we have our 12 core CPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and our RX 580. Next, let's upgrade your SSD. So with that, you've got a one terabyte SSD. 
I think it's time to see if this thing actually works. Matt, would you like to do the honors? Yeah. Oh, uh, I have to take off my powered by EVGA. No, it's fine, it's fine. It's powered by EVGA. Oh. So you get a little RGB going here? Yeah. Hey, it works. There you go. All right. So we go up to about this Mac. We see, there you go. Two, three gigahertz, six core Intel Xeons. Hey, 64 gigs. Okay, cool. So all of our eight gig DIMMs are showing up. So for reference, we're going from a quad core Xeon all the way up to a pair of six core CPUs. And we're going from eight gigs to 64 gigs of RAM. Now, Geekbench, I think, should show a fairly substantial difference, especially in the multi-core. 2734, 20,000 on the multi-core? So, single core, obviously, is not that impressive. I mean, it's essentially a 10-year-old processor. But 20,000 on the multi-core for a 2010 system? That's ridiculous. So, for reference, uh, before the upgrades, the single core was uh, 2175 and the multi core was 7600. Wow, that is a huge difference. Next up, we have Cinebench. Now, not only will this test the CPU, but I'm also curious to see how much higher the GPU score is. So, especially when you consider that this started out with a 5770, I mean, a 580 is going to be, man, five, six times faster, eight times the memory. I mean, it's a massive, massive difference. So, we're going from 43 to 59. Um, that's not that great. Oh, dude. Look at that. I never get tired of seeing like a million threads spin up for Cinebench. So you know what's crazy with this? It's not actually that expensive when you consider, right? So what do you think it would have cost to first of all like buy like your original Mac Pro chassis and just do like the, the tray upgrade with the memory and stuff? Um, I mean I've seen I've seen the like the original chassis go anywhere from 250 to about 450. The six core uh, uh, CPUs you can get for like 180, uh, which is bananas how cheap that is. And then the um, the 580s I've seen for 175, so brand new. Realistically, so. all of the upgrades we've done to this system are about a thousand dollars, maybe a little yeah. bit more, considering that we have the one. Well, like, okay, the 14 terabyte drive is like that's, 500. That's, that's overkill. We're, we're gonna ignore yeah. that part of it. To really put this to the test, we have our resident editing man, Jimmy Champagne. It's me, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so we are editing off of an external SSD. So we're using this little Samsung T5, which is plugged into Matt's uh, USB-C card. So that's pretty standard. Yeah, which is what we edit all of our videos on, but it seems to be fine. So now we're gonna try and sync the footage, see how quick that goes. That went as quick as it does on the iMac Pro. We'll do better quality. The Mac Pro. Right. This is unrendered 4K ProRes right now. Yeah, so oh. is this the We're getting your texts. Ooh. Oh, this is bad. Is this a woman? <laughs> oh, Mac got quite fast. Background render is a little slower than the iMac Pro. Well, so basically, you have a 10 core uh, iMac. Pro, yeah. Which is obviously faster. But uh -huh. when you compare this to something like a MacBook or an iMac, this is still more powerful. I'd say it's noticeably faster than the MacBook, but noticeably slower than the iMac Pro. So it's falling somewhere in between. Which is which pretty is impressive fine. for a nine-year-old desktop, which we just Frankenstein together. Yeah. With like less than a thousand dollars worth of parts. So that, my friends, is building the ultimate Mac Pro. For something that's this old, the amount of power we're able to get, especially considering the price, is super, super impressive. So if you excuse me, I'm going to go buy a lot more of these and have some fun. That actually sounded really ominous, like as if I'm gonna build like some supercomputer out of Mac Pros. I'm actually not gonna buy any more of these.